Juan Alberto Alonso. I am the head of the uh, Lucy Software Iberica uh, branch of Lucy Software in Barcelona. And uh, I would like to, to speak about uh, a number of things starting from the use, uh, some general factors about the use of machine translation, then focused uh, on the Iberian languages, the Iberian spoken in the uh, Iberian Peninsula, that's Spain and Portugal. Uh, I want to go in, in, into a little bit more detail on a success case with Catalan, and then to comment on two special cases as Basque and Portuguese are. Okay, so first of all, uh, when it is machine translation useful? I think it's important to notice that the question is not, is it useful, but when is it useful? I mean, we uh, assume that machine translation can be useful because of our experience during uh, many years. Only it can be useful under a number of conditions or circumstances. It's not always useful for anything you, can, you, you may want to do with it. So when is it useful? Uh, first, when it is adapted to use specific needs, things like terminology. Mm -hmm. If uh, you have customers translating uh, automotive uh, documents or uh, administered, uh, administrative documents, legal documents, etc., you have to provide the right terminology for the, to the system to get uh, better translations. Uh, document formats are, are also an issue in the sense that many uh, different customers may have different formats, uh, ranging from, uh, I don't know, doc or word documents in, in, in the different uh, versions to HTML documents, XML documents with different uh, proprietary uh, formats, TTX, um, you name it. Um, in design, etc., etc. So this is um, also an issue which may affect the, quali the final quality because of formatting uh, issues in the system or in the text. Also, linguistic peculiarities are an issue in the sense that sometimes uh, individual or uh, some some customers want. Uh, specific kind of English, Spanish, whatever, uh, Catalan, that, match, that matches their, their, their needs, their linguistic needs. Why? Because uh, they need to, they always want some kind of, I don't know, of menu to be translated in such a, in, in a, in a very specific way and not in the standard way, so, so to say. So this is also important. We will see an example of that later with La Vanguardia case. Okay, uh, FD is useful when it is properly used, which is obvious, but according to the translation quality delivered by the language pair in question, what does that mean? You don't want to, you, 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 for instance, you can, you can use MT to produce a bilingual edition of a newspaper on a daily basis, as we will see later, if the quality that the system provides for the language pair in, uh, involved, in this case, Spanish to Catalan, or Catalan to Spanish, is, is high. But you can do that uh, if you are talking uh, about, I don't know, Spanish to Russian, or Spanish to even to Basque. Uh, but in some other cases, it's enough that, you, that the quality uh, the, the system yields, it's enough for you because you only want to either have a general idea, a rough idea of what does it say, or, or you, 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 can, you have time to post edit it. The type of documents is also uh, important. Uh, it's not the same to, to translate a well-written article, a well-written uh, document, with uh, the correct punctuation, the correct uh, no errors, uh, spelling errors, no uh, short or not very long sentences, etc., than 
trying to empty, to empty uh, translate a chat, for instance, or a dialogue, which is the, the, the worst thing you can do with empty. And then uh, the user environment, where it has to be integrated, also plays a role. Normally, now, you always have to integrate the machine translation system into a customer environment. And this can be very, very complex, as we, we, we will see later. Finally, um, again, integration is, is, is an issue, and, and, and it's uh, more and more, it's becoming more and more important uh, in the sense that most customers, or most big, medium-sized, big-sized customers, now are using CMS, proxies, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. You have to, to integrate the system to be able to interact with, with these uh, components. Uh, also, press agencies or newspapers, as we will see later with La Vanguardia, have very, very complex technical clothes where you have to to uh, plug in the system. And translation agencies also the same. It's the same case. Now, uh, to the use of MT, as you all know, there are two, traditionally, two uses or two kinds of use. One is the so-called dissemination or production, where you have very high MT quality. It um, typically uh, applies to closely related languages. Uh, for instance, within the Romance languages, it, this is the case. Or within the Slavic languages, it would be the case. Within the Baltic languages also, Scandinavian languages, you name it. And it can be integrated into very, very, very complex user environments. So this is the use for productive use, production. Now you, you have information uh, uh, users where you don't really want to produce translations to be published, for instance, but you want to know what a text says in a language you don't know. Uh, in this case, translation quality does not need to be very high. Of course, the higher, the better, but it's not the, the most important uh, factor here. It normally applies to ling uh, languages linguistically more distant uh, between them. And it's very useful to break language barriers, which is not the case in the first case, or, or it, it could, could not be the case in the first case. So. When you break uh, language files, that means if you, if you don't know Chinese and, or Russian or German and you read a text in German and you try to read it, you understand zero. If you go to 60%, that's a lot. So going from zero to anything higher than zero is a lot, always. Now let's start to focus on, on the on the situation on the linguistic situation in the uh, Iberian Peninsula. As you know, here we have uh, Spanish and Portuguese as say official languages, Spanish in, in Spain, Portuguese in Portugal, but also we have in Spain uh, Galician in, in Galicia. Basque in the Basque country, and then Catalan with its uh, uh, um, different var variants like uh, Valencian or Balearic or Catalan in Catalonia, in, the, in this area, Catalonia, Valencia, and the Balearic Islands. What is the status of these languages? Well, Spanish is the official language in, in Spain, and it's, uh, and there are four co-official languages besides Spanish, which are Basque, Catalan, and, and or Valencian. It, it depends on how you look at it. it normally it's Catalan mm -hmm. and Galician. They are co-official in the sense that they, uh, the uh, uh, Basque, Catalan, Val Valencian, and Galician speakers have the right to speak the language and to use the language. 
and they are, as we will see later, they are officially promoted to uh, to be used or to keep alive. Portuguese is a different case because Portuguese is, is the, the official language in Portugal and in Brazil. Of course, Spanish is also official language in most of South American and Central American countries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, uh, then the, the, there is a new uh, linguistic normative towards the international unification of Portuguese uh, in the written uh, language, of course, uh, in Brazil and Portu uh, Portugal. Now, why um, why do we say that, that the Iberian languages is a unique case? Because apart from these two uses here, or two factors affecting the use of MT, there is a third one playing an important role for the co-official languages in, in Spain, for Basque, Catalan, Galician, and, and yeah, that's it. The political factors or the socio-political factors, as you may want to name them, is the promotion of minority languages is a political issue and is supported by local governments, by local public administrations. In that sense, I always uh, mention that a language which is not computationally alive runs the risk of becoming a dead language in some way. So it's um, apart from, from the support of uh, promoting the use of the, of the of Catalan, Basque, Galician, Valencian, etc. Uh, in all uh, everyday um, um, environments or, or, or activities, that's uh, schools, universities, press, etc. It's important that these languages are computationally uh, treated. For instance, in machine translation or in other uh, computational tools. So this is an issue and this plays an important role in all this picture in this case. That has another consequence and is that there is a need for a huge translation volume. Why? Because uh, by law every document or most documents uh, published by public administrations in Catalonia, in the Basque country, in Galicia, and probably, I'm not really sure, but uh, I think so, in, in Valencia and in the Balearic Islands, mm -hmm. have to be in both languages, in Castilian, Spanish, and in either Basque, Galician, uh, Cat Catalan, etc. So this is a, an important issue that does not happen in the rest of the, well, I would say, of the, wor of the world, but of Europe, for instance. Now, in some way, uh, this, the, the combinations among Castilian, Catalan, and Galician, when I say Castilian, I mean Spanish, Spanish, what you say Spanish in, in English. In Spanish, we tend to say Castellano, Castilian. Uh, this combination is uh, an ideal scenario for machine translation. Why? because first the, the translation quality yielded by MT is very, very high. Since they are Romance languages, they are very close to each other. They have a, a century-long tradition, which, which makes that many syntax structures are, are shared by them, even idioms, etc. So you, you get a quality uh, well above 95%. Even if you have a specific uh, uh, use, a specific customer, or a specific um, situation where, where you can, where you want to use this, this uh, a language pair with these languages, and you uh, you work 
out uh, through a ramp up phase, you may even get a, an even higher quality, let's say 90, 97, 98%. Which are, you will never, you will never reach 100%. Never. Even with these languages, you always have some kind of small or not so small errors because the technology is, 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 is that, I mean, you, you can help it. But the quality is really, really high. And then we have the, the, the factor I mentioned before, that the daily normal use of Catalan, Galician, and Galician in this case, is officially encouraged and supported by the local administrations. And this is very important again. So there is a real and constant need of translation for huge documentation volumes between Castilian and Catalan. That's the top language pair, I would say. Less for Galician, because less things are published in Galician than in Catalan. But still, there is a, a market there. And now I think this is an, an important point. Um, Few people are aware that MT has been used for years, and when I say years, I mean more than 10 years probably, in productive complex environments for Castilian Catalan uh, newspapers. We will see an example of that uh, in the next few minutes. Translation agencies, public administrations, for instance, Generalitat de Catalunya, has been using our system for. 10 or more years. Incidentally, they, they tried with Google um, last week, I think, and we thought not much success. But the important thing is that they are they are using it for, for many, many years. So that means that millions, literally millions of words are empty translated and post-edited on a daily basis. And therefore, and that's the important point, there exists a year-long culture for productive use, where users and post-editors have been trained and are used to use these systems. And this is a, probably a, a unique case in the world. So uh, I'm not sure whether this could be, say, exported or, or transferred to, to other countries, to, to Switzerland or to Belgium. Yeah. Well, um, now you said the Euro culture for production of uh, due to the fact that Catalan and Castilian are so, um, say, ever, since ever, uh, embedded in the Spanish uh, world, or mm -hmm. Spain, I mean, I could think of Canada having two official languages, French and English, but there too we have the same situation. Uh, the year of culture for MTU. Do you have any? Yeah, Canada is the, you're, you're totally right, it's the only case I could think of that is relatively similar to, to the one here. The only difference is that the quality you would get between French and, and English is not the same as you would get for uh, Spanish, Catalan, and Galician. They are more uh, apart, they are linguistically apart, and then you get a, a, a lower quality. So, you, you, of course, you can still use MT there, but for in a more restricted uh, way. I'm not sure you could uh, translate a, a newspaper from French into English or English into French on a daily basis, uh, because you would need a lot of post-edition. Now, um, as you see, now the, the, the factors playing a role in, in, for Castilian, Catalan, and Galician are designations, so it, it, they are um, apt to be used in productive uh, environments because the, uh, the quality is very high, they are closely related, and they can, it can be integrated into very complex environments. And then you have these political factors, promotion of minority languages and need for huge transition volumes. 
No, I want to make now a kind of parenthesis of, of um, stop and talk about a success case for Spanish to Catalan, which is La Vanguardia. You may know, I don't know if you know that this newspaper is the, the leading newspaper in Catalonia and one of the main newspapers in the rest of Spain, with an average daily circulation of over 200,000 copies. And it is, this is important, it is widely recognized as a quality newspaper. So, um, it's a good newspaper, actually. Starting last uh, year, in, on May 3rd last year, La Vanguardia has two parallel editions, one in Spanish, that was the, the, the original one, so to say, and another in Catalan, and they are parallel. So if you go to, to Barcelona, or I don't know here, you, you, you would find La Vanguardia in one in, in Castilian and, and the same in Catalan, and you can simply choose which to buy. According to, to the, what they say, um, Ignacio, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, they are selling 50-50 now, more or less. When they, when they uh, call us, the people from La Vanguardia, and said, uh, yeah, we want to do that, we want to go for a Catalan edition, can you help us? This was a, a challenge. This is, um, because uh, theoretically, if you want to make a bilingual daily edition of a newspaper, you may think of three possible options. The emptiness option, so I don't want to use empty at all, I would do it manually. The full empty option, that is, since the quality is that high, is so high, I just put it through the empty system and, and let it go. And the sensible empty option, which means Okay, I, I am using MT, but not only MT. I am using post-editing, human post-editing. And I have to customize the system, which is very important too. Now, the, what, what happens with the MT less option? That means you have to duplicate the whole editorial human team or and hire a team of N, which N and not being unknown, an unknown number, of human translators to translate the entire newspaper content on time in order to keep both, both the editions synchronized. That means duplicating most of the IT infrastructure, which is very, very complex in the case of La, La Vanguardia, and I guess in the case of most newspapers. So given all these factors, the question arises of whether it would be feasible to produce bilingual editions of a newspaper in this way, so by human translation, uh, translation. Why? Because it would um, cause dramatic increase of cost, and we are not in a time of rising cost, and you would have very tight time constraints. And this is this is a key factor for newspapers. You have to go live yes or yes in the end of the, of the day. Now what is what would be the full empty option? I just want to use empty, I don't care about uh, the quality because it's so high. Um, okay, that means as I told you, it's just taking the, the original edition and just putting it through the empty system and whatever comes out. Uh, gets, gets published as the uh, Catalan edition. Obviously, this is not an option because even for, for the quality we are getting, which is higher than 95%, you could say 98%, there's still uh, mistakes. There are still mistakes. And some of them can be very um, shocking, so to say. Uh, proper na names, um, wrong uh, lexical selection, homography, all these things. And even even if the if the sentence is perfect from a grammatical uh, etc. point of view, the style wouldn't be the one that a Catalan speaker would use. 
I mean, even if you take a Castilian sentence and just run it through the empty system and you get the Catalan version of it, and that's okay, that's correct, that's grammatically, you, 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 you cannot say anything about it, but it may not sound natural to a Catalan speaker. He would use a different uh, way of saying it, that of course the system won't reproduce, because what they do is paraphrasing, not translating. Okay, so what is then the, the solution? The solution is <coughs> the sensible NT option, which means customize the NT system to the specific linguistic needs of the newspaper. They have very uh, clear style guides of how, what, what must uh, a Catalan or a Castilian text look like. They have corporate technology, they have we have to be careful about proper nouns. Uh, some proper nouns have, must be translated, so, translated, some others no, uh, must not, etc. Uh, we have to integrate the empty flow within the newspaper ed ed editorial flow. Document and character formats, which is quite complex, I can tell you, is, is not easy. Uh, the connection to a post-edition environment, Feedback processing, so the errors they are, they are detecting have to be in some way fixed by us as long as it is possible. And now it's very, very important to incorporate a post edition environment to be used by a team of human post editors in the editorial flow. Now, what we have here is a compromise between the empty use, so you save time and effort. But you, you also want to offer translation quality. You also want to offer a decent Catalan uh, text. And this was very, very important for them. So the overall requirements for La Vanguardia, they were, it's, uh, there's one daily copy of La Vanguardia, which includes over 60,000 words all of, all of them to be translated, revised, and post-edited. And this should be done every day um, in, in five, six hours, I think. Five hours by a team of post-editors. The, the Catalan edition should comply with the linguistic requirements of stated in, in the style guide of La Vanguardia. Both editions should be ready for printing every day at 23.30, um, the latest. That means this is a, a, a must. I mean, you, you cannot um, disregard this, this thing. You have to be ready at that time. Otherwise, the newspaper won't come out. Now, in this moment, most <coughs> journalists at La Vanguardia are writing their, their uh, articles or whatever in Spanish, and this is not the base edition. So basically, basically what they are doing is to translate from Spanish into Catalan, and then to revise the Catalan edition. But uh, at midterm, I cannot tell you what is midterm for them, but say, I suppose the next, uh, yeah, also, every, they want every journalist to be able to write either in Spanish or in Catalan, and then use the system in both directions, the empty system. So actually there will not be any base edition. There will be a kind of mixed edition out of, of, of which you will have the Catalan edition and the Spanish edition. And finally, both the empty system and the post edition environment should be completely integrated into the editorial flow. That means IT integration and human team integration, which both of them are not easy. So how was it customized by us? How was the system, our system customized for, to be used at La Vanguardia? Uh, there were a, a team of computational linguists, post editional experts, and the Languardia editorial team working together for six months or more 
I, I can say now for more than six months, in order to customize the MT system to the linguistic requirements as far as this is possible. This is not always possible, but sometimes it is. That means we added over 20,000 lexical entries and we changed around 400 or 450 rules in the empty uh, computational grammars just to, to match their requirements. Yeah? And then to integrate the empty system into the, the IT editorial environment, they are using a CMS called Hermes, which is not the latest thing in the world, but, but it's, uh, it works, but it's not easy. Um, they have their specific character format and external tag handling, so we have to adapt to it. We have included markups specifically, specifically designed for post editors, and we have to have a translation performance that is able to meet the transition load and fix requirements. And then, very, very important, a team of around 15 persons has been trained on post editing the empty output, and they are working on a daily basis to, uh, to, to, to have uh, the, the final Catalan edition uh, revised and ready to be published. So conclusions, what means, uh, what is the, what do you need to produce a parallel bilingual edition of a da daily newspaper? You must use MT, that seems to be uh, conditions, otherwise you, you, you can't make it, or you can make it but with very high cost. But you, ca you have to properly customize, adapt and integrate the, the newspaper linguistic and IT requirements, and you have to use a team of post editors who correct not only correct anti mistakes but also give the human flavor to the Catalan edition. That's why when you asked about uh, uh, Canada, uh, the same could be done there and with uh, English and French. But I, I guess I'm afraid it, it would take more post edition and more customization probably than for Spanish and Catalan. Okay, let's come back to the other languages. And um, let's see something about Portuguese. This is, uh, again, a different scenario with, with respect to uh, Catalan, Galician, Spanish, or even Basque. <coughs> uh, is one of the uh, of the Iberian languages together with Spanish, obviously, which with a high level business potential, both in Portugal but also in Brazil, Brazil and South America. It's, uh, that's very important. The transition quality given by anti systems between Portuguese and Spanish is very high, similar to the one among Castilian, Catalan, and Galician. Probably not that high, but very very close to to it. Uh, but here, instead of having political factors playing a role, we have um, business factors, business needs, and opportunities. And this is the, 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 difference, the difference, so to say. So here, uh, besides the dissemination factors, you have the market needs, and you don't have the political factors. There is a wide market asking for quality translation between Portuguese, Portugal Portuguese, and Brazilian Portuguese, and Spanish. And there's a need for huge translation volumes. That's true. Okay. Now, Basque. Basque is, is yet another different, very different scenar scenario. Why? If you have a look at these sentences, you can, say, you can see that uh, in all these five languages, the sentence reads more or less the same. El Vasco es un caso particular entre las lenguas de la península ibérica. El Vasco es un caso particular entre las lenguas de la península ibérica. 
o Vasco è un caso particolare in tedesco in questa penisola di Variga, eccetera, eccetera. Even in English, it's not that different. Basque is a special case among the languages of the Iberian Peninsula. But if you go to Basque, you have this <laughs> Iberian Peninsula co is concerned Artianus Caracas Uberesia da, which is nothing very similar to the rest of the sentences. Okay. That means that um, now we we are not playing with the high quality factor that was the case with Castilian and Catalan yeah, and Galician but we could have we can have a, a decent empty quality for restricted domains and it could still be integrated into very complex user environment and this is be, ha, has been the case now because uh, the Basque government is using our system in their portal and the integration was really uh, was not easy, and the quality we are yielding now for Spanish into Basque is mm, is good. Uh, I mean, it's the best one you can get now with the technology for the moment. But it, it's not by far the same as you 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 have with Catalan or Galician again. Now, in this case, uh, language. Uh, barriers play a role only in one direction, from Basque to Spanish. Why? Because most, I would say, 99% of Basque speakers also speak and understand Spanish, but not the other way around. So if you know Basque, you also know Spanish normally, but if you know Spanish, you may not know or understand Basque. So in this, way, in this uh, sense, the, the, the language pair Basque into Spanish, where we are working right now, would be a help to, to break uh, language barriers. And there and here with Basque, again, we have polit what, political factors playing uh, an important role. So you have the promotion of the of Basque is, is, is very important for the Basque government. And there's a need for a huge, or for pretty huge translation volumes because of that, because everything in the public administration at this has, has, must be published in both languages. Now, uh, again, the, the, what is special about it's not an Indo-European Indo language. It is linguistically very, very different from the rest of Iberian languages and, in fact, from the rest of the world languages. It's an isolated language, so it, it is not related to any other known language uh, at least for the moment. Uh, the anti system quality will be, will be, in fact, is lower than, than the one you get for the other languages, for Portuguese, Galician, or Catalan. If it's adapted with terminology, uh, memo, um, terminology memories, and some tuning you could get a higher quality for restricted domains. It is, uh, the Basque government is uh, encouraging very, very um, seriously the, the daily normal use of Basque, which is not easy. I mean, it's not the same picture as we have in, in, with Catalan, where everybody, uh, most people there speak both languages and use both languages on a daily basis for everything. You cannot, you cannot do that with Basque right now. And, um, yeah, the use of MT to translate from Basque into Castilian again would be uh, uh, an example of assimilation use of, to break the language barriers. Well, this is the, the portal of the Basque government uh, where uh, everybody, so any, any user going to this, to this um, website can um, translate from Spanish into Basque short text and web pages. It was presented last uh, February 28th 
and it's uh, now up and running and we are uh, our, our system is behind it they are at the time quite happy with it they will start using it internally on a productive uh, basis so that means that they will use post editors to to correct the, the output and we are working right now on the other direction on Basque in the Spanish and we will, also, we will also start on working on English into Basque. Okay. <laughs>